Hi, so today we will study polygons uh, and some triangulations on them. Uh, polygons are important in our digital geometry processing class where we will mostly deal with polygon meshes. Uh, basically these are the pieces, linear pieces that form our uh, digital models embedded, embedded in 3D or sometimes 2D but in general they will be in 3D. So there is a, let me start with a nice analogy between uh, integers and polygons. So uh, just consider prime numbers uh, and integers where prime numbers are the building blocks of integers through this prime factorization, uh, you know. Uh, and similarly, uh, triangles are the building blocks of polygons. Okay, so just like you cannot divide a prime number further, you cannot divide a triangle further. So it is the atomic piece that form your polygons. Uh, but there is a little nuance where uh, prime factorization is unique. There is only one uh, factorization of integer into primes, whereas uh, triangulations are not unique. Even in this picture, I can see two different triangulations of the same polygon. But this is not a big deal, it doesn't uh, spoil our analogy, it doesn't break it. Uh, so polygons are defined as the closed regions of the plane bounded by a finite collection of line segments <coughs> that doesn't intersect itself. Where we call these line segments edges, uh, and uh, we call points where two edges meet are uh, vertices. So points are also known as vertices. Uh, and the important deal here is that the vertices are ordered in a polygon. So this is vertex 1, 2, 3, 4. So there is an order. So if this is 1, this is not 2, for instance. You cannot jump from here to here. You need to follow the edges, uh, which are non-intersecting. So they define a well order. So these are polygons and in particular they are convex polygons where uh, any two vertices can be connected and all that connected connector line remains within the polygon. These are still polygons but they are not convex unfortunately, they are concave. Like take, uh, I don't know, this point and this point, this vertex, the connector line will be partially inside the uh, polygon, so it is not a convex, it's a concave. These guys are not even polygon at all because this is non closed, for instance. Remember, I need a closed region, and uh, not all sides are segments, some holes are there, so these are not polygons. And 3D generalization of a polygon is called a polyhedron. So, just like you connect 2D uh, lines sorry, one-dimensional lines to form a 2D polygon, you connect two-dimensional triangles or polygons in general to create a polyhedron, which are listed here. Obviously, not all the polyhedrons are here, but these are the platonic uh, polyhedrons or aka platonic solids. We have proven cool theorems on them in our previous lecture, but these are polyhedrons by, uh, in short. Uh, so I can show you the polygonal Jordan curve theorem here, where this theorem uh, intuitively shows the fundamental similarity between all polygons. Uh, so what is that similarity, by the way? It is the following. We have this boundary, the white one, of a polygon. It partitions the plane into two parts namely the bounded interior B and the unbounded exterior E or G. Uh, so each from above divides the paper into two, into an inside part blue and an outside part green. So this is not so tricky, obviously. And a point that lies in one part cannot get into the other without, uh, no matter how you deform or stretch the boundary, of the polygon, again a well-known fact. Uh, uh, 
so here I deform and stretch even further still uh, if it is inside at some configuration it will remain inside even if I do bad things to the boundary and uh, but as I do bad things to the boundary it will be kind of difficult to decide whether a point is inside or outside at the first glance at least so obviously you can decide it here instantly but here it is not that trivial but there is an easy way to understand it there is an algorithm uh, where you draw a line from that query point towards infinity uh, and this line is not parallel to any edge of the polygon which can be done because after all the polygon has finite amount of edges so you can just select uh, some direction that doesn't make a parallel connection between a finite edge finite number of edge one of the finite number of edges okay so once you have this line from x query to infinity like in this case here if the you intersect it with the boundary b if it intersect it odd times one two three it means that we are all, uh, if the line odd number of times x is inside yes so it means that so this is uh, not the point the point is in here so this is my infinite line I don't know why I put a dot here so this is going further uh, but the point is I have an odd number of three in this case intersections which makes this guy inside because I need one in movement to go outside and the even intersection will put it inside back the odd will put it outside back so this can be used to design a trivial algorithm uh, based on this odd even test uh, and you can understand whether a user clicks inside a region, a weird region or not and that region may even represent a button in a graphical user interface okay so this is that uh, now let me go further on the polygon polygon discussion and we will also connect this to this uh, polygonal Jordan curve theorem at some point but now let's uh, do polygon analysis let me introduce this term diagonal which is basically a line segment connecting two vertices of the polygon P and lying within the interior of P entirely so this is a uh, diagonal this is not a diagonal because it is not lying in the interior of P and these two are crossing diagonals then comes the definition of a triangulation of a polygon which is basically the decomposition of the polygon into triangles by a maximal set of non-crossing diagonals maximal means that I will not be able to put another diagonal inside of my polygon without intersecting or crossing an existing diagonal so this is a triangulation it is impossible for you to put one diagonal so this is for instance a diagonal candidate right from this vertex to this vertex but if you draw it it will be intersecting two diagonals so uh, but if it was not a maximal triangulation it was not maximal assume that I don't have this diagonal then uh, I would be able to draw this and it will be maximal then uh, so it is easier to obtain these kind of triangulations we will see an algorithm uh, on that uh, it is even is easier than the structureless point set triangulation that we will see later it is the most famous one is the Delano triangulation where the input is just a point set a naked point set without any order information remember in my case here I have a polygon where I have this order information 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 etc so I will make use of that to design an easy algorithm and as I am coming to that algorithm let me answer uh, several questions like in reverse order must every polygon have at least one diagonal I wonder and yes they must uh, let me prove it real quick take a polygon with four or uh, more vertices 
basically I can't have a polygon with two vertices it will be uh, it will not be closed I need at least three vertices and for a, a three vertex polygon aka a triangle there is no diagonal okay we don't claim that but for four or more vertices polygon which is for instance in this case one two three four there is a diagonal which is here this one or if you don't like it I can also use this diagonal uh, but they, they exist at least one of them in this example I can find two diagonals so how does that exist select the bottom vertex V and select its adjacent ones A and B notice that I have ordering in polygons so I have access to the neighbors by definition so if the line from A to B is inside entirely within the polygon then done it is my diagonal but otherwise which is the case here just sweep a line parallel to this AB line like here and this line is bound to intersect hit a vertex at some point and that hit point uh, will be called X and then VX will be your diagonal then uh, I will use this fact to show you that every polygon has a triangulation for sure. Uh, so let's do some induction on number of uh, vertices P. Again, if P number of vertices N of P, if N is three, then the polygon is a triangle. Yes, it has a triangulation, which is itself trivial base case. Otherwise, for big ends, like in this example below, I know that there must be a diagonal, as I have proven here. Put that diagonal here, the orange one. It separates uh, the polygon into P1 and P2 subpolygons. And they are smaller than my initial case, so by inductive hypothesis, induction hypothesis, they can be triangulated. Uh, and also by the polygonal Jordan theorem, I know that the interior of P1 is the exterior of P2 and vice versa. So they are not, these triangulations are not overlapping. So you can just take the union of them to get the triangulation of your big polygon. And this idea extends well to polygonal regions with holes. Uh, basically what you do is you get rid of the holes and in this example, for instance, I, I end up with three uh, polygons one is this polygon the second is this one and the third one is this one you can just triangulate them as proven here now let's increase dimension so this is a known fact in math uh, as you increase dimension you are likely to lose some structure okay so we are seeing in Good exam a good example of this here. Although every polygon has a triangulation, in, in I am talking in 2D, in 3D I have this polyhedron embedded in 3D, but it doesn't always have a tetrahedralization. Obviously, this guy, the cube for instance, I can't talk about the triangulation of it. I have a space now. I can talk about dividing this cube into uh, other polyhedron. So I am talking about a tetrahedralization, for instance, if those polyhedrons are tetrahedra. <clears throat> Apparently, it is not possible to tetrahedralize all the polyhedron. It is possible to tetrahedralize this uh, particular polyhedron cube. Uh, and in this case, I have two different tetrahedralization with five uh, tets here. One is green here in the center, uh, two is here, three is here, four is here, and five is invisible, uh, blocked by this green thing. So it is like here I am pointing. <clears throat> there is also another tetrahedralization with 12 tetrahedra. Uh, and actually, if I recall correctly, so let me just come here real quick. Uh, there are yeah, okay, this was the paper's name. There are, uh, this was a SIGGRAPH 2018, SIGGRAPH ASIA 2018 paper, where they discovered that there are 174 subdivisions of 
the cube or hexahedron into tetrahedra. So I am just showing you two of them. There are more. If you are interested, you can go look at that. But if I come back to my original question, which answers to no, by this country example, discovered by this guy, and the polygon is named after himself. Uh, so the problem with this polygon is all the possible diagonals are external, hence there is no tetralization of it. Now let's do more uh, facts uh, on a polygon and its triangulation. Number of triangles in any triangulation of polygon P is the same. Uh, nice structure again. And this is equal to n minus 2, where n is the number of edges. Okay, let's prove it by induction on number of edges. When n is 3, I am dealing with a triangle and there is only one triangulation of it, which is going to be 3 minus 2 is 1, which is this guy, 1. Okay, base case. Uh, let's do further. Again, thanks to my previous proof, diagonal AB exists. Let's put it here. Now, now I have P1 and P2. Uh, with n1 vertices on p1 and n2 on p2. So what is n1 plus n2? It will be n plus 2, right? Because n is the number of original vertices here and this and this they are counted twice. Once due to p1, once due to p2. Hence n plus 2. Okay, uh, so I have this equality in my hand. Now, uh, using induction hypothesis this is a smaller case, smaller polygon, where I can, by induction, uh, triangulate it in n1 minus 2 different ways, because this p1 has n1 vertices, and I can use the induction hypothesis. Similarly, this guy will be creating n2 minus 2 uh, different triangulations, uh, and as we have seen before, they are non-overlapping, so this sum is the number of triangulations of the whole polygon. So what is that sum? It is n1 plus n2 minus 4. Okay, this one. And I know that by some smart observation, n1 plus n2 is just n plus 2. Hence, n minus 2 triangles is proved, proven, has been proven for <coughs> any triangulation, for any polygon key. Uh, okay, uh, let's do the first triangulation algorithm then. Let's leave math a little bit aside and let's come back to uh, computer science a little bit to see the to see an algorithm that is able to triangulate a given polygon. So this is called ear clipping method where ear is defined as follows. Take three consecutive vertices. Again, I have order information, hence I can talk about consecutiveness. ABC, if AC is diagonal, aka inside or IE inside the polygon, then ABC is the ear, okay? So take 0, 1, 2 and take this ABC, so A to C will give you this line which is not inside the polygon, it is overflowing here, so not an ear. Then 1, 2, 3. Again, 1, 3 is not inside, overflow. Then 2, 3, 4. And finally, this is a ear, because 2 to 4 is entirely within the uh, polygon. So what you do is you remove, clip this ear. So I am coming here. And you remember that diagonal, which will be in my output result set. Okay, so here I will just accumulate them. This is my resulting triangulation. Now, in this case, in the new configuration, I was at 2 and 3 has gone, so redo everything. 2, 4, 5, yes, this is an ear. Cut it and remember that cut in your result set. And you now have this 2, 5, 6, where I have this ear and put it to your result set and proceed in this manner until you end up, uh, you clipped everything out of your polygon. And to make this algorithm work, I believe that there is there are some ears around, right? Otherwise, I can't clip anything and can't put anything. And as I clip stuff, I end up with a new polygon, right? 
so this polygon should also have some ears to let me continue so I should better prove that given any polygon with sufficient amount of vertices like four or more there will be ears actually there will be at least two ears not even one okay let me prove it so for any polygon with n vertices I know that there are n minus two triangles I have proven it so each triangle covers at most two edges of the boundary so let's first swallow this uh, statement each triangle covers at most two edges of the boundary so okay I have an even better triangulation here so take this triangle it covers two edges okay sometimes triangle may cover only one edge which is still okay in this case right only one edge of boundary is covered and for some triangles let's take this guy it covers zero edge of the boundary which is still okay but no triangle can cover three edges oh so at this one edge should be in should be non boundary so we believe that this statement is true then each triangle covers at most two edges of boundary so I have n edges around because I have n vertices in this case for instance n is equal to 10 and I have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 edges by reasoning uh, so okay I have n edges uh, but only n minus 2 triangles remember n vertex will give me n minus 2 triangles so if I put uh, if I use triangles of this kind where only one edge contributes to the boundary I have only n minus 2 of them but I have n edges around so 2 is missing right so it means that I need at least 2 triangles that has 2 edges on the boundary so that that n minus 2 will go to n minus 1 and then n uh, and so I just proven it uh, there are at least 2 triangles with two edges on the boundary and these guys are uh, the ears that I want uh, okay other facts sum of interior angles of any polygon with n versus is pi times n minus 2 again an easy proof here so basically sum of interior angles is sum of this angle plus this angle plus this angle so if you look carefully I will be summing the angles of all triangles they will contribute eventually to these big angles and so on so I have n minus one of them and uh, every triangle has the angle sum of pi hence the polygon sum will be pi times n minus two and a similar reasoning can help me to get the sum of the turn angles of any polygon with n vertices so turn angle is that I have this angle of pi and pi minus the interior angle okay so in other words the angle will be here the turn angle again this is the turn angle it is pi all the pi minus the interior angle so what is happening then uh, I have n vertices so I have n pi's all angles and from them I will just get rid of sum of interior angles which was proven here to be n minus 2 times pi so just put them here do some little math it will give you 2 pi another interesting question will be how many different triangulations does polygon p have unfortunately there is no closed formula here at least for all polygons for convex polygons there is a close formula called Catalan number n that gives you the number of triangulations with n plus two vertices uh, polygons. Uh, but for the other cases, it is difficult to come up with a formula because a little movement will change the triangulation behavior. Uh, so how how can I just show it with a very intuitive example for instance if this is your polygon it accepts only one triangulation right this is because this diagonal will be outside but if I just move this guy a little bit here 
then I end up with this polygon which has one and one triangulation this and the second triangulation will be uh, so let me draw it here from scratch the second triangulation will be this one okay first one will be this one don't see this vertical thing and second is this one so see with a little movement I just change the number of triangulations so it is hard to come up with a number actually uh, but for convex cases it is not hard actually it is proven to have a particular number uh, where convex polygon is basically a polygon where all the pair of non-adjacent vertices determines a diagonal so do I have a convex polygon around uh, no so then let's draw one so a convex polygon will be something like this for instance so take any pair of vertices like this and this and this line between them is a diagonal similarly for another pair this is going to also be a diagonal for this pair it is uh, not interior at all but for if you select this pair it is also diagonal so for convex polygons I have some structure which I can use to find the exact number of triangulations but in general I don't have that number here for instance in this concave polygon I can have two different triangulations by playing with this diagonal in this concave case I have I can have only one triangulation and if I want a general polygon with uh, exactly two triangulations then I can maybe go with this polygon okay so this part will always have one triangulation and this part will have ones with this diagonal and if you erase it the second one will be like this okay so then let's talk about the following recall that in every 2d polygon with n vertices we have the same number of triangles in any triangulation there will be a lot of different triangulations but in every one of them I will definitely definitely have n minus 2 triangles again as I increase dimension I am using this structure as well uh, so there is no particular number of tetrahedra to subdivide the same polyhedron so e even in this example I am talking about the same polyhedron here I end up with 5 uh, polyhedra here 12 polyhedra and in that paper I mentioned before I think they have proved that there are uh, 174 polyhedra possible uh, yeah so there is no final number here and let's close this chapter by going through a nice uh, application so this is called art gallery problem where the task is to cover uh, a, an environment so this idea can be extended to other domains but in the original specification we are talking about the 2d floor plan of a given gallery or a place whatever and you will be putting guards with 360 views uh, and uh, the visible points are marked as orange here basically you shoot a ray from the guy to the uh, boundary and uh, if it is entirely within the polygon then it is visible okay uh, okay then what is happening here uh, each guard okay pro so your task is to put minimum number of such dots such guards to make everywhere orange okay so obviously you can be very generous and put like a everything to every corner or something it will cover it but it will be costly so we will discuss this issue now for convex polygons obviously there is one guard and it's its place is doesn't even matter I can put it everywhere it will cover it for sure for concave shapes uh, again for some of them one guard is enough but now you need to be careful about the placement you can't just place it here because if you place it here then 
it won't be seen here because the line from there to this guard to this point will not be entirely within the polygon so you need to put it I guess somewhere in this location and this is by the way called the kernel of the polygon in this case I need three for every uh, extrusion and here two is necessary I guess one if you put one here it will cover everywhere here right up to here and maybe the second one will handle the second place uh, so first time I need two guides guides or guards whatever there is a typo guards are needed is for some hexagons apparently uh, so the problematic part is the large angles by the way so let's take this comp shaped example uh, where I have uh, m prongs or extrusions and each one comes with one two three uh, uh, so like one two three vertices you can count it like this hence I will end up with three n vertices but let's come back to my n vertex syntax then e since each prong again a typo each prong needs its own guard so this is a weird typo I think I try to stay in line anyway since each prong needs its own guard I need and I have n I have n vertices meaning that I will have n over 3 prongs uh, and each prong needs its own guard so I need at least n over 3 guards okay so this is my lower bound because I can't go below this number because if I go below that number I won't be able to cover this particular shape so it will ruin my theorem so this will be a counter example so n over 3 is the least amount of guys you can hire but is it also sufficient? In other words, is it also the upper bound? Uh, let's discuss it. Uh, so now the triangulation discussion has uh, come to place here. Uh, because a triangulation is a convex thing and you can uh, obviously cover a convex shape with a guard. You can put anywhere. It will cover this so I know that with n vertices I will be looking at n minus 2 triangles for sure so okay for every triangle put one guard then n minus 2 will definitely solve my problem so I have established uh, n over 3 as my lower bound and for my upper n minus 2 will be the sufficient amount upper bound however is it tight enough this is my question because when n is like 1 million uh, I will be hiring 999,998 guards uh, so not a very good deal I guess if I can show that this bond is tighter like even n over 3 then I will be hiring only 3000 guys 300,000 guys 333,000 guys whatever uh, so is n minus 2 optimal no not too tight so let me solve that problem so this is the cool smart observation why am I putting the guard inside of the triangle while I can just put it to the edge of to the vertex of the triangle because this vertex is kind of in the inside of all the touching triangles, right? By logic. So by putting it here, I will be covering one, two, three, four triangles. So with one stone, I will be hitting four birds. <coughs> then, okay, uh, my problem is improving. Uh, here, uh, I decide to use the vertices of my triangles and it will move me to this colorability theorem in math uh, so every polygon every triangulation is three colorable so what is a colorability it is the following if two 
Gertrude's are connected by an egg. You need to put different colors on them. Okay, so uh, in a triangle, everything is connected with each other. So obviously, you need three colors, and but three is enough apparently, uh, because this is a triangulation. Remember, so if I have this thing, this diagonal, which is crossing the existing one, then three wouldn't be sufficient because I have red, black. Uh, and red, black, white, okay, but this couldn't be red anymore because red is connected to this, so this could be green. But no worries, this won't happen in my case because I won't have any crossing diagonals, okay? So let's come back here. Three colors are enough to paint color a any triangulation properly. So let me first uh, prove it then, okay? So it looks that way but let's have a proof about it so when n is 3 number of verses in my polygon I have a single uh, triangle and I can cover it with three colors red green blue okay or in this case red black white for bigger n like this I have a big polygon and I know that there is an ear around I have proven it before so let this be uh, be the tip of that ear remove this ear okay so now I have this polygon that is the smaller scenario which can be colored three colored by inductive induction hypothesis so okay I have a three coloring of this polygon minus this thing now I add it back and as I add it back I am sure that it will be connected to only two vertices here so use the unused co color which is white in this case okay so three colors now i'm coming by, back to the article problem three colors are enough to uh, color the triangulation okay then i will claim the following uh, <clears throat> uh, i will uh, use uh, so I will have three colors adding up uh, to number n, right? So n over 3, let's go uniformly, plus n over 3 and n over 3. So this is, uh, let me write it first. I have three colors to color n vertices, okay? This is equal to n. Uh, so this is red, black, white. My observation is the following the least frequently appearing color will be n over 3 okay so in this case everything is n over 3 but if i for instance increase this then to reach this value i need to decrease this right so with that logic uh, i will definitely have something less than or equal to n over 3 so okay then since that color must exist in every triangle because remember a triangle has three vertices and i only have three colors around red uh, black and white so whatever i use will definitely hit that triangle so i will use the least frequent color which is uh, going to happen and over three times as i have shown here so just use that color in this case i don't know i think it is red red one two three four five it exists five times uh, so put the guards to the red points so what just happened is if you recall i have proven the uh, lower bond and then i have found this bad upper bond and then i make it tight and i have used this upper bond n over three so lower bond and upper bond are the same um, and I will be needing only n over 3 guys to color, uh, to guard my gallery. Uh, and uh, we will stop our discussion by some uh, nice paper implementation uh, ideas. Like we have talked about polygons. How about interpolating one polygon into another one? So, in other words, you have two polygons and you interpolate from source to target to create the intermediate polygons. It can be done with this relatively simple 
algorithm here or you can deal with the 3d art gallery problem uh, with uh, a polyhedron covering okay <clears throat> so uh, let me not even stop here and also handle the uh, handle what handle the uh, point set uh, point sets which is a related topic in our uh, class so it is also related to the previous polygon discussion now I will I won't have any polygon around I will just have uh, willy nilly points around and I want to triangulate them I want to find their convex hull etc so let me talk about that chapter also within this video uh, <clears throat> so the main difference here is the points that I will deal with here will be unordered they, they will hence slightly complicate things but this is an even more common scenario because we generally end up with just points no connectivity information no order information so we will still be able to uh, abstract uh, put nice abstract uh, representations uh, around them or within them one representation is the convex hull basically you have this point set this is uh, a non-convex set region enclosing the input black points this is a convex region but not the convex hull the convex hull is like this assume that these are nails on your wall uh, and you release a rubber band and the final shape that rubber band converges is your convex hull. Uh, in other words, it is the smallest convex region containing the point set. And uh, another description can be the intersection of all convex regions containing S, which is very hard to implement with this definition. Uh, so uh, we will be using other definitions based on visibility for algorithmic designs. Convex hulls are useful to start with. Uh, for instance, they are nice for collision detection action. Uh, so, do we, uh, okay, for instance, maybe I can show it here. Uh, so, if you have this shape, maybe a sword, uh, and in computer games, generally, to test uh, this object with another object in the scene we look at the bonding box of this object which happens to be this in this case that's even use the axis aligned bonding box and then use it with the compare it with the bonding box of uh, this object for instance which is already a box so it is itself so they are intersecting that's why you treat trigger the high de more detailed uh, exhaustive point by point uh, collision search however instead of using the uh, bounding boxes i can use convex hulls which are tighter which is in this case uh, the object itself so the convex hull of this versus the convex hull of this isn't intersecting to begin with so i don't even do the collision test in robotics, uh, my robot, uh, there is an obstacle that prevents him to go from source S to target T. So, obviously you can touch here and trace all the paths by uh, uh, with your sensor, but this will be a very long ride to take. Uh, but if you just take the convex hull of this obstacle, then you just need to traverse through the convex hull edges. So, for instance, this edge is not a convex hull edge, you will not even touch it. Another application can be from statistics domain. Uh, I want to find a pair of points with the largest distance between them. So, these, these they can be descriptors, I can be in this descriptor space here. So, find a pair of points with the largest distance between them. And so, these pairs these points will definitely occur on the convex hull. So instead of looking at all your 1 million points 
and test them look at all the pairs like uh, 1 million choose 2 you just look at the 10 uh, convexal points and do 10 choose 2 and look at pairs on the convexal points only uh, so convexal construction uh, is uh, can be okay uh, if you have a less number of points and if you have a plot of them somewhere you can uh, find it visually by visual inspection but if you are only given these numbers without the plot uh, then as a human being it is very hard to talk about the convexal at all so we need an algorithm. First one is the gift wrapping algorithm, where uh, I can identify hull vertices in this uh, output dependent complexity, where n is the number of input points and h is the number of hull points. So unfortunately, when all the input points are on the hull, then this complexity goes to n times n, which is n square. So when does this occur? For instance, if your input set comes in the form of a circle in 2D, then circle is a convex thing, right? Then all the points, input points, will be your actual convex hull points. Then this algorithm basically sucks. But uh, in general, we expect the number of hull points will be less significantly less than n so then this algorithm is like linear so there are trade-offs actually i have shown the worst case here what is the best case by the way uh, i have millions of points so i won't even draw them but let's just put four of them for a million and i have three very separate points so in this example convex hull will be this triangle right so then the algorithm runtime will be n times 3. It, is, it will be literally linear then. Okay, so what is the algorithm? It is going like this. Start with the bottom most point, which is this guy. Draw a line segment to all others. Okay, I did it. Choose the next turn point on our wrapping of S uh, to be point set S to be the point that makes the largest angle with the last constructed hull edge so initially there is no hull edge so initially take this uh, horizontal line as your initial line so i have i look at my angles so for this vertex so this line should are supposed to touch here okay so for this vertex i have this angle for this vertex i have this angle for this vertex i have this angle and so on so for this vertex i have the largest angle so i select this one as my first hull vertex this is the hull edge now this edge will be my guide and i recompute the angles of all these new lines towards this hull edge so this will be the largest angle right then i will select this thing <clears throat> okay so and this is o n times h because at for every hull edge i recreate n samples uh, and rays and lines <clears throat> uh, another algorithm will be n log n time algorithm so compare this with n h so it is it doesn't depend on any output complexity which is nice uh, but it is n log n time and it can't be extended to 3d trivially whereas gift wrapping can be done in 3d easily so in this algorithm what i do is again start with the bottom most point uh, draw a line segment to all others uh, where am i okay uh, so I did this sort the remaining points by the angles they make with the horizontal line okay I have this invisible horizontal line uh, I sort them again by the angles with the horizontal angle so this is <coughs> the largest from largest to smallest <coughs> construct the hull, hull following this ordering in triplets so I will go in triplets 
adding points for left hull turns and deleting for right hull turns. So I now have these numbers. I have some kind of ordering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So first go 1, 2, 3. Am I making a left turn? Yes. So this is a this is my hull currently. Then 2, 3, 4. I am still making a left turn. If you consider it that way. Uh, then I have okay, then I have I am here 3, 4, 5. Now I am coming from 3 to 4 and then I am making a right turn. So I delete this edge then by definition. So now I have 2, 3, 5 which makes another right turn so I delete them. So I end up with 1, 2, 5 which makes a left turn. Okay, no problem. Then 2, 5, 6. 6 is the next unprocessed one. I am making a left turn. Okay, so keep it. Then 5, 6, 7. A right turn because from 5 to 6 and 6 to 7 is kind of right. So delete them and delete them. I have 5, 7, 2, 5, 7 is okay. Then 5, 7 and 1 is the next one. It will give me uh, the hull. And it is n log n because initially I have uh, n different numbers to sort based on the angles. Which takes n log n time with, with merge sort or quick sort. Uh, uh, actually with quick sort the worst case is n square but uh, le let's assume it is a merge sort where I definitely have n log n time in the worst case and then the processing is just going in triplets so it is a linear process hence n log n time dominates and the third algorithm I want to discuss is this divide and conquer algorithm which is again in n log n time and it is better than the Graham because it can be extended to 3D uh, I will also show you that extension very quickly uh, so here sort all the points by x coordinates okay again sorting due to that I have n log n uh, then divide the points into two sets from the middle and then recursively do that again divide them divide them divide them Okay, here. So you stop dividing when you have one point or two points or three points in the set because I know that for those cases I definitely know the convex cell by construction. With two points, the line is the convex cell. The problem is trivial. So these are my base cases. Base cases. So for instance, take these two. Then I need to merge them. So as I back up. So merge this and this, which will give you this convex cell, and merging of this and this will give me this quad convex cell here, and merging this and this will give me this. Similarly, merging this and this will give me a triangle. Then merge this versus this with that guy, and this versus this will give this merging. And finally, I merge this thing with me this thing, giving me the convex cell. So now the important problem to deal with is given two convex cells, how do I merge them into one convex cell? So to do that, uh, I need uh, this upper uh, tangent and lower tangent line. So for this vertex, I can look at all the candidates, uh, like I select this candidate for instance, and is everything below this imaginary line? No, this is outside, so it doesn't work. So I need to hit the correct uh, one. But this algorithm is not that fast. It will be on n square because for this vertex, I look at all of them here and I do it n times. To keep things in n log n bound, this merging should be done in o n time, just like in the merge sort logic, where the merging function takes o n time if you recall. So how do I do it in o n time smartly? Select this rightmost vertex and draw these lines uh, to, to, towards other sets. Uh, so for instance draw a uh, wink of uh, this uh, so from here I go uh, I when I select so I start 
with the leftmost point and I will go in order because notice that this is a convex hull anymore where I have order it's a polygon convex hull means it's an ordered set of points so if I extend this line so this line is not a good separator because some of the B polygon is above some is below similarly if I extend this some is above some is below however when I extend this I am very happy with this because everything is above this line so then I do this zigzagging from here I just go skip to this guy and then I do the same from here I send this ray which is not good because it is partial from here again partial all on partial under from here partial under partial on but this is perfect because everything is over a so as you can see I am skipping lots of things in one shot so then I do the same towards here from where I left off I sent this ray not okay I sent this ray not okay and here I send it it is okay so this algorithm takes just linear time to handle my merging uh, and the 3d extension of this will be basically I have two uh, convex uh, 3d uh, polyhedron polyhedra and I just find this uh, upper and lower tangent planes in this case I was finding tangent lines and there is one last connection I want to make where I can solve the sorting problem using uh, this uh, geometric construction so it's an interesting solution to me in the first sight so I want to sort numbers like uh, 2, 3 minus 1 uh, 1 and uh, maybe 4 whatever so the thing is you will put these lines onto your x-axis so this is my x-axis and you will take their square so you will end up with a parabola so for 1 I will have this for 2 I will have 4 for 3 I will have 9 for 4 I will have 16 and for minus 1 I will have another one here so the nice things about parabolas are they are convex so if I find the convex hull of this point set I will end up with a hull that consists of all the points because it's a convex set okay so then in other words convex hull is a polygon it's an ordered set of points so start with the leftmost one and follow that ordering so what was it it is minus one here and then one was here and then 2 was here and then 3 and then 4 and you did your sorting so and we know that sorting cannot be done faster than n log n time so it implies that con convex hull construction cannot be done faster than n log n time because if I could have done that then I could have solved the sorting problem under n log n time which is a contradiction uh, okay so let's proceed and do some triangulations of a structureless point set so convex hull is about the exterior if you recall or realize uh, I am I think writing it here uh, is about the boundary of a point set triangulation is on the other hand about the interior of a point set um, so triangulation is important because mostly I sample data functions at some sparse points and I can interpolate them within the space using the body centric coordinates defined on a triangle for instance so in this case I have blue red and green uh, values maybe I use the scanner or something I put those values there by spending money and for freely I put the corresponding colors here so it makes really sense to have a triangulation of a given point set because I can interpolate the function value or a height value for terrain construction for instance on the unorganized data points uh, so with polygons we have boundary edges and internal diagonals yes we know that with point sets we just have uh, edges to describe any line segment 
that includes two points offset as endpoints. Okay, some unnecessary information. Uh, I don't know why I have written this. Maybe it is connected there at some point. Triangulation of a point set S is subdivision of the plane by again a maximal set of edges. Ah, okay, edges is used here. Whose vertex set is S? So what this says is this is the convex cell. This is just a subdivision uh, of the plane. But this is not maximal because I can put this edge without an intersection. But this is triangulation. This is triangulation and this is also a triangulation because I can't put this edge, for instance, without an intersection. So I know that uh, the edges of the convex cell must be in all triangulations. So this is a good information. It can help me with my uh, triangulation algorithm design. Uh, so to prove that, go with uh, proof by contradiction, where I suppose that an edge in the triangulation is not on the convex cell. Then a point, in this case this point, will be outside the convex cell, which is a contradiction. Also, uh, this subdivision uh, inside the convex cell will give regions and those regions will always be triangles. Uh, again, proof by contradiction. If not, for instance, here I have one, two, three, four. I have a quad here. A little weird quad, but it's a quad. I can, it is not maximal. I can still put this edge. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, now let's see our first triangulation algorithm of a, a point set, not a polygon, okay? So triangulation algorithm of a point set. So the blacks are my input. I can find their uh, convex cell of S. Uh, okay. Uh, so I can find the convex cell of this point set like with the gift wrapping algorithm or divide and conquer algorithm. So it comes here and then I can triangulate it since it's a polygon. I can use any of my triangulation algorithms like the ear clipping method and I am done. But here I am using a different triangulator. What is that? Uh, choose an interior point and draw edges to the three vertices of the triangle that contains it. Uh, okay, so here the convex cell is the red one, not the diagonal here. After the triangulation of the convex cell with the ear clipping method, for instance, I end up with this triangulation with five red edges, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is my current input. Now with that, I go to this uh, full triangulation algorithm where I choose an interior point. Okay, I choose this one and I connect it to the existing uh, vertices of the triangle that contains it, which is in this case this big red triangle, as you can see here, and I do it here as well. Then repeat, connect it here, repeat, connect it here, and this is your output. This is order dependent because instead of this, if I first select this, then everything will change and I will end up with this triangulation, which is not the same. Notice that initial whole triangulation, uh, also this affects the result. So uh, even if I select the points in the same order, like in this case I selected 1, 2, 3, 4, I will still select it in 1, 2, 3, 4, but the whole triangulation is different than the above. So the output will be different, top and below. So they are all order dependent. It is not a bad thing, but just uh, let you know that. Uh, so here is a nice theorem about this uh, tri triangle splitting based triangulation algorithm for the point set. I claim that any triangulation of S using this algorithm has this many triangles where k is the number of interior points uh, okay and h is the number of hull points okay so triangulation of the convex hull will have 
h minus 2 triangles, right? Because convex hull, h is the number of hull points, it's a polygon, and I know that it will give me h minus 2 triangles. Remember, n vertex, n minus 2 triangles from the previous lecture. Okay, so I, I, have, I have n h minus 2 triangles, and an interior point replaces, so take this interior point, it will kill this big inter, uh, triangle, so minus 1, and instead of it, I it, it puts 3 new one plus 3. So, in other words, it increases the count by 2. <clears throat> so, every interior point does that, and I have k of them, so I have 2k uh, new triangles around. <clears throat> and I, I do it for all the h minus k uh, triangles of the convex hull triangulation. So this will be your final answer. But this algorithm is not able to create all possible triangulations in the world. For instance, uh, if your point set comes in this format, then uh, then what? So remember this algorithm. Do the it first computes the convex hull here, and then uh, makes a triangulation of the convex hull. Uh, so in this triangulation, uh, we will end up with this. So this is a little bad drawing, but anyway. So so le let me draw it from scratch more clearly. So this is the triangulation of the convex hull. And algorithm tells me to first triangulate this. Uh, so once I do this, it's impossible to go to this configuration, right? Because this middle guy is supposed to touch everywhere, but now it is not possible to go over that, right? But this is possible, but it's not possible. Another algorithm is called incremental algorithm. Uh, I sort the points of the point set by x coordinates, okay. First three makes first triangle, okay. Consider the next point in order and connect it with previously considered points which are visible to P. So visible means send a ray from here to the existing points. This is not visible because it intersects an existing edge. But this and this are visible, so this is my triangle. They are visible, this is my triangle. Then comes this, then comes this, as you can see, one and this. Then I process it, and so I end up with my uh, triangulation. And again, with this algorithm, will I be able to produce this triangulation? I doubt it. So again, first three will give me this triangle by definition. Then this is not possible for me to go from here to here because it will intersect this edge. So I can't do this again, but this is possible. So if I continue with this, I will end up with this output. So now let me uh, extend that 2k plus h minus 2 number for any algorithm. So if you recall, I have done it for the uh, initial uh, splitting algorithm, but actually it applies to all uh, algorithms. So any triangulation of a point set with uh, k interior points and eight uh, convex hull points will give me uh, 2k plus h minus 2 triangles. And I will use my popular Euler's formula we have discussed in the first lecture, uh, which is this, if you recall. Number of vertices minus number of edges plus number of faces is 2. So, let's understand this now. A triangulation subdivides the plane into t plus 1 faces. Okay, so in this case, I have two triangles, t1 and t2, but it has three faces because I also have this infinite exterior face. So, a triangulation subdivides the plane into t plus 1 faces, t triangles inside the hull, and one big face, infinite face, outside the hull. Each triangle has three edges, as we know. And outside face, 
in this case this one has four edges or in but in general it has eight edges where eight is the enclosing convex hull so hence i have three t plus eight edges around so this edges uh, it overcomes the number of edges as we have discussed in the first lecture because uh, every face so this face counts this edge once but this edge it also counts it once so i count this edge twice so actually uh, 3t plus h number this whole number of faces is actually equal to 2e twice the e or i can also write it like this then apply my euler's formula which will give me t is equal to 2n minus h minus 2 and then instead of n i can just plug this information because n is number of vertices which is equal to number of hull faces plus number of uh, interior faces so when you plug that in you end up with this magical number and again you can plug uh, number of edges into this Euler's formula to uh, see that the number of edges will also be fixed and equal to this particular number uh, so here what's interesting about this triangulation uh, is the fact that you can pause and think about it but I know the answer so the every vertex is uh, meeting is in the meeting of five edges in other words degree of every vertex is five yes so but this is a triangulation with a very regular structure um, so you, you can look for cases where all the degrees are six or four or three yeah uh, actually for three cases, I just couldn't resist and looked for it myself, I guess. Three, so this is a triangulation with all the degree three, with all the degree two will give you only the triangle. All degrees four is also here, and all degree six is a mystery, you can look for it on your own. So you can do edge flips to go from one triangulation to another. What is, what is an edge flip? It is, you remove this edge and replace it with the other non-included points so this doesn't apply if the uh, polygon is concave because then when i try to do it here when i replace bd with ac i end up with this configuration where abc is one triangle and adc is another triangle and they are folded on top of each other so there is some weird intersection here so we don't do that here I, I am showing you how to go from one triangulation to other by just uh, uh, following a sequence of flips and uh, here is a case where no flip is possible if you connect this vertex with others so let me just to the first part at least so if so this is one triangle this is second triangle and so on so if I try to flip this edge I will end up with what configuration so this will be a b c that a b c and after flip I have a k c or I set it a b c then a d c maybe so this is going to be a zero area weird triangle here uh, Two flips possible case is going to be here where we have uh, this triangulation with one uh, and then I have this connections from top and below it doesn't matter I can't flip this part at all but I can flip here with one or two cases now these flips are good because it helps me design this Delonai triangulation algorithm which basically, uh, so first I am going in a weird order here, but the greedy Delanai triangulation algorithm is telling you this. Start with a, a triangulation. Uh, so there is nothing around, so let me do start with triangulation. Uh, 
where I have this triangle and this one and then this one so etc I have a triangulation so go over edges one by one so take this edge for instance it concerns one two triangle so flip it and if the flip improves the triangulation keep the flip and do it for all edges greedily it will put you into the Delano shape what is that shape it is the configuration where the minimum angle is maximized okay mean is maximized so let me be more clear here in this case don't see these two triangles okay just focus on these guys the minimum angle is I guess this angle right like it's I don't know 22 degrees if I flip this edge so let me redraw this outer shape is the same when I flip it it will be a bad drawing but uh, it is a terrible drawing so I didn't I will be more careful so if I flip it okay uh, now the minimum angle will be probably this it is maybe 25 so the the thing is it is the minimum angle has improved it is better it is more big bigger so I keep the flip okay if you follow this logic greedily then you will convert all the triangulations into the uh, Delanoi one by just doing flips and Delanoi is as you may notice here it prevents skinny triangles that I avoid I should avoid so in this case again this is a very the below one is a very skinny triangle right it is long and thin when I flip this into this configuration all the angles all this this triangle and this they look like a more like an equilateral triangle uh, so uh, assume that I am on a field I collect height information on some sample points here and I want to lift them up so I have four sample points and I know their height from my uh, helicopter or something so I can if I make this triangulation here and apply this lifting then I will end up with a valley right however if I use this triangulation and I do the same lifting amounts be careful now I have a mountain so it really matters and it is even more clear here so here if this is your point set what do you expect? I don't know. By default mode, I expect like a mountain here. From here, it is going up and now going down. So I can capture it with this uh, Delanoi triangulation. But here I have a sort of a skinny triangle where it will just create a gap here out of nowhere. Okay. So 82 and 88 will go up, but 2 and 8 will stay down. So there will be a valley here. But here everything is regular uh, mountain. Th that's why uh, we generally prefer the Illinois triangulations. And uh, with that algorithm you can do it. Uh, one other way to uh, look at it is the following. It maximizes the minimum angle of any triangle, which is why it is useful. Another way to look at it is the following. If ABC is a Delanoi triangle, then take the circumcircle of it, the circle who's who is touching all three vertices. Then inside this circle, you can't find any other point of your point set. So this is okay. But here, this is not a Delanoi triangle ABC because in the circumcircle pink one, I have a weird point from my point set. So what you do is actually, if you put it into your grid algorithm, you will flip this black edge with this red edge. And as you can see, this configuration of the red triangles will be better than the current black configuration. Yes, and here I think I'm talking about that flip mechanism. Uh, there is another special triangulation called MWT, minimum weight triangulation. It is answering this question, minimum ink to draw. Minimum ink to draw 
it compared to all other triangulations. So what is the minimum amount of wire I need to spend to cover this area? Uh, so skinny triangles come with long edges so and delanoi avoids them. So why not just use delanoi? Uh, yeah, it's an idea and this is a delanoi triangulation by the way. But MWT happens to be uh, more effective, a different algorithm here. So Delanoi triangulation of this point set will be using this many wire meters and this is better MWT. And MWT computation is proved to be MP hard by some reduction to an existing MP hard uh, uh, method uh, problem. So uh, an alternative solution can be uh, instead of complete triangulation of a point set, use a tree that spans the point set, minimum spanning tree, uh, which is uh, minimum spanning tree covers all, connects all the points with minimum wires, but uh, um, yeah, so they will be covered at all, uh, after all. And the, there is also a nice related theorem, minimum spanning tree of a point set is a subset of Delanoi triangulation. So Delanoi triangulation, uh, minimum spanning tree edges will definitely be included in the Delanoi triangulation. <clears throat> yeah, so it justifies uh, that minimum weight connection. And for in 3D, there are structured algorithms to create surfaces out of 3D point class like the crust algorithm or Poisson reconstruction algorithm all nice published works but there is also this uh, easy to understand and easy to this uh, implement method where you can find the local neighborhood of each point uh, by using k nearest neighbors of a given point okay here for instance I have that then you have this k plus 1 points, find the tangent plane of them by finding the covariance matrix of this point set and getting the eigenvectors of it. Uh, so these are all well-known tools in computer science. Uh, okay, so I have that tangent plane and that k plus 1 points, project all of them into that plane. Now I am in a 2D environment where I can do Delanoi triangulation and I can also, after that connection, I can lift them back to 3D, to their original positions. And I can do it for all the uh, all other places as well. Then I can take the union of these uh, black triangulations here to uh, give you the uh, desired triangulation of the 3D points. So this is more like, more of a heuristic algorithm, but still it, it is worth a shot. And finally, let me stop with the Voronoi diagrams, which is another important point set uh, analysis tool. Basically, convex hull in the beginning was about boundary, triangulation was about interior, and Voronoi diagram is about the points not even in the input set S at all. So, it is defined as the set of points X not in S, so in this case, white points are the S input points. So X, set of points X not in S that are at least as close to Voronoi's side P, the black dot, uh, as to any other Voronoi's side Q. So what am I saying here? Any point here is closer to this uh, white side than other white sides. Okay, so all the points here will get service from this white side and the black will be the uh, Voronoi vertex we construct okay so Voronoi region for the side PK which is here PK is this uh, is all the points uh, that are closer that are more close that are closer to this PK than any other side P, P K. Uh, <clears throat> yes uh, and Voronoi diagrams and Delanoi triangulations are duals of each other where uh, you can create the Delanoi triangulation uh, by just uh, 
connecting the neighboring Voronoi sites. Uh, and what else? Yeah, I have discussed this. The, this is one application of this is about assignment problem. So if you have, if you are a post office, all the apartments within this region will get service from P Prime from this site. Or recently we see this in digital geometry proce processing uh, papers, like about interaction representation. So here a house and a fence. If I just use the center of masses and the, display, the vector between them, then this confuses with this same vector where the input pair is totally different, a, a little house and a dog. However, if I use the Voronoi diagram between this green point set and the pink point set, aka the equidistant surface to these two point sets, then they are definitely very different uh, from in, for different pairs. For instance, in our example here, I guess it was this uh, dog to little house. I have this weird uh, surface, Voronezh surface, uh, whereas here this looks more like this case. I have a cylindrical case, and the algorithm here is. You have two uh, point clouds and you want to find the interaction between them. You just find the Voronoi diagram of the whole point set and then select the Voronoi edges neighboring to different colors, like in this case this, and then the representation will be this equidistant curve in 2D. It will be surface in 3D. You can do fracture creation uh, with Voronoi diagrams, basically these are the Voronoi edges then uh, and for instance you are a bullet is hitting a place and you will uh, create a fracture, you can do prefracturing by just densely sampling the points around the hit point and computing the Voronoi diagram and the Voronoi diagram edges will give you this break effect, right? and if you even don't know the contact hit point in advance, then you still design your template here and in the contact time you can rotate this template and put that high density part to the hit point so you have your prefracture. But again this only holds for uh, symmetric shapes, for non-symmetric shapes. This is a very open research area, there is one paper here for instance. Uh, this is something to think about and as as we talk about this fracturing issue uh, I also found this animation with lots of fracturing inside of it so let me just uh, play it real quick I really like this animation so this is also a good pause point <coughs> So that rock will be fractured, and we will see in a second. Yes, some fracture happened. So this monster is helping. some misunderstanding and another fracture is coming yeah so it also gives a good message uh, yeah now let's end the class with the final application of Voronoi diagrams which is the extraction of medial axis which is basically Think of the curved skeleton, the skeleton within your body. It's called the curved skeleton. Uh, and medial axis is a superset of it. It means that it is more than that. Uh, it is defined as the set of interior points that have more than one closest boundary points. And we use that kind of information in 
shape deformation for instance uh, and to do that uh, we compute the diagram Voronoi diagram of the boundary points which happens to be this one and Voronoi vertices which is this guy will give you the medial axis and it makes sense because Voronoi so this is equidistant from the input points right so we are looking at the interior points with more than one closest points that are at equal distance but there is a problem with this algorithm if you have a noise like a little dot inside of your polygon then your Voronoi computation will try to avoid that so you will get this weird effect in your medial axis okay this is the end see you